All right, it's a beautiful day out. It's about 64 degrees, and it's in November. That's nice. Um, I want to start on the siding up here. We got that panel here. It's about a 15-foot cedar tongue and groove. We got a couple 18s there, a couple 18s there. They're a little rough shape, and I want to find out why, because cedar's, you know, insect and water resistant pretty good, and it does have paint on it. You know, it's a solid stain. And um, I want to find out why water must be held somewhere. And uh, I'm going to get out some tools, probably a circular saw to cut down the middle, oscillating sander, finished nail gun. I'm not sure I'll paint any new boards until I I see the condition of these, see if they're pine. They, I believe most of them are cedar. I got to find out. And... Um, Hey, let's get set up and get going. All right, I grabbed my tools, threw them in a tote over there, got them in the lift. Now let's see how close I can get. Hopefully I can reach it. I, I don't know. I'm a little worried about the guideline up there. So let's see if it fires up today.
Not sure how much of that you could see. Didn't really take that long, and the lift, I, you know, you don't really need a lift in this area, but I have it. And the nice thing is you can put all your stuff with you. You go up a ladder with a circular saw and saw in front of you. Boy, the dust down your neck. Dangerous. Um, I've got one, two, three, four, five pieces. Yeah, five pieces there. The top one, and we got that over here. It looks like there is cap flashing over the window, but it looks like the water come off the edge of that and the caulk failed. You saw me tear out a whole strip of caulk. It's all dried out. And it looks like it got behind it. You might find it down in this mess here. But this caulk gets very brittle. Hear that? So they probably just used a latex caulk and it dries out. Usually, you don't want to butt your siding real close. You want it to kind of dry out and you apply your caulk over the surface and that'll give the board a little bit of expansion room. So, I've got a little bit of cedar. I'm gonna calculate how much I got. I got, what, 20 and 3 eighths and 55 and 5 eighths. Over here I got an 88, I think it is. Oh, it looks like I can get it out of my eight footer. Yeah, 88. And uh, so let me go get some stain on it. I might back prime it, find some caulk. You know, paint all six sides of a board and then you don't get cuppage when it gets moisture behind it. Um, Tyvek, you know, this paper, I don't think it's that great of a product, but it's better than nothing. Sometimes felt paper is better for water. But uh, let me uh, get started with that. And I'll, well, the sun's kind of getting near setting. I got a late start today in the afternoon here. Um, but I'll, I'll get that stained and then I'll be ready to put it up tomorrow then. It'll run overnight. All right, I found a broken tongue, a crack on that end. I found one, now these are pine. These were in that call pack. I found one with a big knot and then I found one with a split up the middle. So by measuring out, I need two of these at least. And I think what I'll do, because I have them, they were in that call pack, is I'll go ahead and stain all three of them. And that'll give me a couple other boards if I want to do something else around the house. There's a lot of square footage on this house. Some siding on the south side, especially in the west side, tends to get a lot of sun. This is a stain that I used. This is a Valspar solid, one coat exterior stain and sealer for decks, siding, fences, outdoor. And it's a 10 year, all weather, rain ready in four hours. I bought it last fall and I think it, I think I used it a coupon or I bought it during the paint sale and then I got another five percent off so it's still expensive I think it was 150 bucks for the bucket five gallons and they say it goes 400 square feet but you waste some you drip some it's in your cleanup it's in your tools I think you get about 300 if you put it on liberally if you spray it I think you get about 250 a gallon square feet well, this is my way. I'm not going to open it. I'm just going to shake. I hear it splashing, hitting the bottom. If it was a gallon jug, I like to store a lot of them upside down. And then it doesn't settle. So, got a rag. Probably need a screwdriver to pop that open. Got me a paintbrush. I wish I had washed it out. It's got a little bit of that um, undercoating on it. So we got a little bit of 
a little bit of protection in there, right? Sure. And then I've got a uh, little baby roller I got at the dollar store a while back. Good enough for this. A broken pan. Worked great for this. Sometimes it's about saving money, but you still going to get a decent job with it. Yeah, this stuff's pretty sticky once it's dry. Stick like glue to get the cap off. So that'll be our color. That'll look good. And then we'll glove, glove some of this out of here. Any extra I'll pour back in there. And I don't know why paint's gotten so expensive. Of course, everything's gotten expensive. So we'll just get some color on this. And uh, this shouldn't take too long. I wanted to get it on tonight. That'll save me a little time tomorrow. So we'll probably get in the 40s tonight. So it's not going to freeze, but it's going to slow the dry time. These are brand new boards. They're just out of the cold pack. They damaged, cracked, whatever. And then once I put this on, I might put a second coat on because when you're handling it and you put a nail in it and so on, I'll probably do a little caulking and whatever. And probably have to touch them up anyway, you know. Yeah, these are going to cover good. They call it a one coat. These dry good. I'll put. They, we're gonna have dinner here in a little bit, but Dawson's in there actually making dinner tonight. He wants uh, fish. I don't know if he's having flies. I think he's gonna bake it. Sometimes he likes to cook. All the time he likes to eat, but I've been busy today. So. Yeah, this is covering great. I don't know how well you can see that, but it's a pretty perfect match to the house. Look straight down, you won't get the reflection. That'll look good. Looks like a Hershey candy bar. So they always dry a little darker. It's going to be perfect. So I'll get this on, get this coated, and uh, maybe after dinner I'll come out, flip them over, and get a sealer on the other side. These are all going to be cut, so there's no sense of doing the ends. I'll do the ends after I cut them. All right, there's a crack on this end, so I didn't paint that. And there's a crack right there, so I didn't do that. And there's a knot up on this one. So I think with the three pieces, we'll have plenty to go. The color looks great. And this is a solid, so I decided to try it on the pine and match it. So when this dries, it's going to dry darker. And so we'll see what it looks like in the morning as far as matching. Um, if it was a semi-transparent stain where you can see the wood grain, I definitely wouldn't, would want to use a cedar. So I do have the cedar, but it's 100 bucks for three boards, three eight-footers, and 24 lineal feet. And I thought, whoa... A little much so let's see what this pine looks like before I have to buy the other and um, we'll see how that goes and um, see what it looks like in the morning good morning I did coat the second the back side of these I just threw a quick coat on the original ones they didn't they didn't paint the ends they didn't paint the back that probably would have kept a lot of them from cupping because they you seal one side and it tends to uh, swell different on the back side. So here's our little storyboard. We got to have 520 and 3 8 155 and 5 8 188 with a uh, 
about a 412 pitch on it, which is about 17 degrees. Um, so we have the knot on this one. We've got the split down here to there. And then this one, part of the tongue is missing here. Remember, these are out of Culpac. They're new boards, but so I want to use the least amount of waste and see what I can come up with here. Okay, I got my five 20 and 3 eighths. Now I need to, uh, you know, just paint the ends. I got my 55 and 3 eighths, paint the end. And then I've got an extra one, which is fine, because we may have to do some additional work. I'll probably find something else. I don't need my storyboard. I didn't have much waste out of here. I just didn't want to stain them all and then come up into a cut or something. I've got my 88 on a 412 pitch. Um, looks like we can uh, touch up the ends. I'll go get a paintbrush and caulk and go get set up so we can install these. The next thing we have to do, I should show you this. I'm sure a lot of people have done this before. But when you nail on your pine, if it comes to the bottom of something, you can't you can't hide a nail. So you got a surface nail, and then on the top you want to do a diagonal that goes through the tongue on about a 45 degree into the sheathing. And we got plywood behind this. We got tie back then plywood. Um, I want to keep my ends with a tiny gap and then caulk, allow for expansion, drainage. And then when you go to put the next row on, it goes on like this. And then the bottom doesn't get nailed and then you nail the top. Well, the difference with ours is we're replacing panels in between. So my luck doesn't have it that for example, this is the upper one, and we have two boards, that I probably cannot do this. You see how I'm at a slight buckle? Pop my bottom one on, tilt, put my top one on, and then push it together in the center. I don't think that's gonna happen. But if I could, what that would mean is I could just face nail there's such short pieces here, I don't much care about it. Um, I could caulk the little hole up and then touch it up with the paint. And then, otherwise, what we have to do is on the back side, we'd have to cut off the back half of the groove so that we could, the bot on the top one, but the bottom one would fit on, we nail it proper. The next row, we would cut off the back of that groove, and then this would just slide into place, and then we face nail it. So, the one, the long one on the diagonal, I'm probably just going to have to cut off the back, because I don't know how else to get that in there. So I'm going to have to cut off the back groove of that. And so I'll set my saw depth to like three-eighths of an inch, and rip it, and it's almost a half an inch high, that groove. So that's what I'll have to rip off in there. I hear the squirrel inside yelling to come out. When I'm home and outside, he wants to be out here. We got another beautiful day, 60 degree in the in uh, November here, so it's not there yet, but it's going to be. And um, I'm gonna take advantage of doing some of these jobs.
Well, it's looking pretty good. I just got to do a couple minor adjustments and uh, trim out around that window and I'll be back. That one fit in pretty nice. I caulked the edges. Around the window I cleaned off the flake and paint. Peeled off that hard caulk and re-caulked. And I'm going to paint over that in a little bit. Over here, the board, one of the boards was slightly wider than the other one. So I'm going to cut the uh, board on the table saw a little bit narrower. And then I'm going to bevel it. You know, I'll do the bottom edge. And that one, the small one, i got to back cut it so that I can push the tongue in and tip it in. The upper one, i got to trim around the window yet. Okay guys, we just finished up um, the last board. I had to uh, cut the bottom out just a little more. I didn't cut it deep enough so it wouldn't tilt in. But I got the seams caulked. I got everything, at least one coat on it. And what I, like I said, what I'd like to do is you know, if I can afford it sometime, prices ever come down, is get some uh, foam board insulation on there, new windows and uh, green vinyl siding, and or change the whole color of the house to a green. I just think everything's brown, brown, brown windows, brown, brown roof. Um, give it a little life, a little color. But I just wanted to show you how I... I can replace I do that with hardwood flooring too but replace a board without pulling out a whole mess of them just rip down the center and um, take them out put in new and then the last one you gotta cut the back side so you can tilt it in and you have to face nail it and fill it and and paint it so I don't know this looks okay it'll dry the sheen will be about the same and uh, it could use some paint, you know. This is on the southwest side, so it gets hammered with the sun all the time. But it's definitely better than it was. We got the warped, rotted wood out of there and got new wood in and uh, got it coated. And it all blends in pretty good now. So, all right. We'll see you next time, guys.